Now, finally, for our last step, we just have to find the acceleration in terms of t. Now, here's our uh, derived equation for v. It's just mg over b times 1 minus e to the negative bt, itty bt over m. And mg over b, as you will recall, is our expression for terminal velocity. So we want to find the acceleration. Let's just take a look at it uh, here on our graph. Uh, the velocity gets closer and closer to terminal velocity. You can see our acceleration starts to flatten out, so we should end up with acceleration of zero towards the end there. What's the acceleration when we first drop it? When we first drop this thing, what's the initial acceleration? Well, when it's at v equals zero, there's no resistive force because the resistive force is proportional velocity, so it is accelerating at g. So at this point here, at the initial point, the slope is g when it just starts out. When it gets up here at t equals infinity, the slope is zero. So those will be some ways we can check to see if we're right. So all we need to do to find the acceleration is we just have to find the first derivative of the velocity. So that is just d dt of our expression that we already found, mg over b uh, times the expression 1 minus e to the negative itty bitty over m. So we want to find the first derivative of that. To do so, I'm going to uh, find the first derivative. Uh, I'm going to just multiply that out so we get uh, mg over b minus mg over b e to the negative itty bitty over m. And that way it's easier to find the first derivative of it because this is just going to be a constant right here. First derivative of mg over b of a constant is just 0. And the first derivative of this is not too bad. Uh, this is a constant multiplied by our e to the uh, exponent. So mg over b stays there. Uh, and the first derivative of this, cool thing about e to whatever power is our first derivative is just the same thing, except we have to use the chain rule. And that means we got to multiply it by the derivative of this thing up there. So the derivative of that up there is just, well, it's negative b over m. So now, when I write this out, I get negative mg over b. I'm going to put this negative b over m right here. And then it's e to the negative itty bitty over m. And notice that this negative and negative turn to positive. b cancels b, m cancels m, and what I'm left with is this. The acceleration is equal to, all that's left is g, e to the negative bt over m. And let's see what this graph looks like. Here's a versus t. Now, at time equals 0, when this exponent is 0, e to the 0 is 1. So it starts off at what? What's the value of this thing when it first is dropped? The, at time equals 0 right here, the acceleration is g. And then at time equals infinity, as it keeps time keeps getting higher and higher, this becomes a really large negative number, which approaches zero. So it's going to have this shape right here, which should look very similar. Uh, it is very similar to what we found in the very first video about this. That is our graph of acceleration versus time. Notice that the acceleration starts at g. It approaches zero. And the rate of change, the slope here, also approaches zero as well. It stop, the acceleration stops changing or, or approaches a state where it's no longer changing. And it, when it finally reaches zero, uh, it will no longer be accelerating. So there is our acceleration in terms of time. Now, I know that's a whole lot of math. The only way to learn this is to practice, practice, practice. That is the only way to get this down.